Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special live stream we have to close out uh, our year here on the new Appian Community YouTube channel. My name is April Schupel, Senior Developer Advocate here at Appian, and I am really excited to be bringing you a special guest today. Before we get started, uh, make sure you're liking this video and subscribing to the channel uh, because we have a lot more great content coming for you in the new year. So. Let's get right into it. I have with me today our uh, founder and chief technology officer, Mike Beckley. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, April. Glad to be here. So uh, I'm really excited to dig into the technology today uh, a little bit and then also talk a little bit about how becoming an Appian developer can be a really great career. So. Uh, one of my favorite things about Appian is it's making being in technology a lot more accessible to people, um, a more accessible way to break into technology. I know a lot of great stories of people who come from different non-tech backgrounds and become very, very good Appian developers. Um, and even you yourself uh, come from a non-tech background. So as someone who studied government and you were a big debater, and now you're the CTO of a software company, mm -hmm. what's the journey been like for you from writing a thesis about naval strategy to now driving technical strategy here at Appian? Yeah, so I mean, I know what you mean. And I think it's I think it's very important that uh, we look at this opportunity with low code to um, expand who can create and who can be a creator of technology, not just a consumer of it. And that's always been our vision. For me personally, I actually started out, you know, coding on like that Apple IIc you see behind me on the on the on the bookcase, uh, and and taking basic programming classes as a child, and you know that was I think the original low code, if you will, the idea that anyone should be able to create code and execute it, tell the computer what they wanted. Uh, unfortunately, it turned out to be a lot more complicated as the expectations for what software can do grow as people expect software to be, um, you know, mobile and social and integrated and uh, and secure against hackers. It It is so challenging to think of all of those different things and edge cases and understand all the different types of code you might need to create and how it works with other code modules. So, you know, um, for me personally, what I discovered was I was always going to be using technology in my career, whatever it was, but I I, I wanted to be a creator, but I didn't want to have to be facing syntax errors and debugging all the time. And I didn't want to deal with code that wouldn't compile. You know, that was just just a total frustration point for me. I knew what I wanted, but I couldn't get it quite right in the syntax. Then, you know, to find out, you know, hours later that you you know made a mistake, it it just really took a lot of the joy and, and fun out of out of computing for me. So, uh, how did I end up writing a thesis on naval strategy? Well, again, to me. Uh, as a government major, I was looking at how technology was changing the world. And in the areas of defense, the things I was writing about were what we call network-centric warfare. And the revolution in military affairs back in the 90s was this notion that computing was going to transform the way uh, we could actually arm, equip, and, and fight and deter wars around the world. And so to me, technology is at the, at the you know, linchpin of transforming every industry. And, uh, and yet without something like low code, and without something like this, you know, low code automation technology that brings it all together, uh, you know, the potential is really uh, going to fall short of what what uh, we, we expect. And so that's that's what my journey has been about is trying to make this real for more people more to create a whole new generation of creators, not just consumers. Yeah. Um, and we're definitely getting there. I know uh, not just from the perspective of going from high code to low code, but also even going from, you know, COTS products that you get off the shelf, you can customize them and configure them a little bit, but it's always like 70, 80% of what you really want. You can't truly get exactly what you want. And um, in my past life before Appian, I was a consultant working with some different software products like that. And that was my aha moment with Appian when I joined and was going through Academy and just thinking all those times I was in front of a, a client and had to say no with Appian, I wouldn't have had to do that. Um, so I'd love to jump into more of the different pieces of Appian technology that really make this possible and how it's all coming together. Um, and maybe we can start with data fabric because I think that's really like the biggest um, new piece uh, that is has really been able to bring everything together from when we started Sync Records and building and building and building uh, on that. 
Yeah, so Appian is a, a very wide uh, breadth of functionality in the platform. But no matter how good our low-code language is and how efficiently you can create exactly what you want in an interface or how, uh, or how powerful our process automation is and, and being able to bring together your human workflows with API integrations and, uh, and RPA bots and, and uh, intelligent document processing in a single workflow, we found that for the last few years, our projects would still be slower than they could be otherwise when our teams were stuck waiting for database administrators to recode the schemas, uh, when we were stuck waiting for the right stored procedures to be implemented by another team, when we were stuck waiting for uh, database views to be updated, when we were stuck <clears throat> waiting for an API team to actually deliver the data we needed for our low-code applications for our process automation platform, you know that that was the most common, uh, you know strategic impediment to achieving the digital transformation goals was being able to pull together the information in the right ways. And, and even when you have in today's world, so many more data sources than ever and this, and we talk about an API economy because there's so many third parties who specialize in giving you just one unique data stream that you want. So if you're in banking, you've got to go to external parties to, to clear trades, to, uh, to actually, uh, you know, find the, the right, um, uh, information about a customer to complete your KYC compliance. So you're bringing together a, a complete picture, for, but the data is outside the firewall and it's inside the firewall in different systems. And and so how do you merge that information? Well, then suddenly somebody had to someone had to build a data lake, or they had to build these data pipelines, or they had to, uh, you know, uh, build the views and the stored procedures and do all this coding. And again, the whole point of of Appian low code automation of our process automation platform is to not have to do all that code. And so for years now, we've been working on, you know, as you mentioned, these different elements of low code uh, data. And they've come together finally into this data fabric, which is a fantastic capstone for making it possible to, uh, to answer the tough questions, to, uh, to actually combine new systems uh, that will help you serve your clients digitally and with new digital experiences and provide real-time results for them and better decision-making for your employees and do it in a regulatory compliant way because you can combine all the information and reporting you need in one place. And, uh, and, and so that's, that's why the data fabric is so important, but it's, it's only so important because of what you can do with it thanks to what we already have. Yeah, and uh, that's a great segue. That was actually uh, going to be my segue there is that, um, you know, in these large enterprises, there's no way they're going to get rid of all the other technology systems that they have, right? And Appian is not trying to come in and really take over all of that. It's trying to help what you already have, help connect it all together, and then be able to really create the workflows that are needed to optimize those processes, right? And hopefully you keep building more and more Appian apps uh, from there. But we know you're still going to have a lot of other things. And that's why, you know, we started as BPM. We're all about process automation and the data fabric is really enabling our process engine to do even more because not only can we get your data from wherever it is, we can help you act on it. So do you want to talk more about our process modeler, process engine, everything there? Well, sure. I, I think that it, it's, it is important to understand that we, we began, uh, you know, a, a long time ago. With, uh, with this notion of being able to allow anyone to own and control and change their business process. And, and when you start there, then it, it becomes obvious that you're not just building applications, you are actually trying to get some business outcome. You are trying to onboard your employees more quickly. You're trying to resolve uh, claims faster. You know, there was a story in the Wall Street Journal this morning, uh, I'm sorry, not the Wall Street Journal this morning, in the uh, Washington Post this morning, a great expose on Social Security, you know, people's disability claims are taking hundreds of days, taking twice as long as they did before the pandemic to resolve, and uh, and and that's a that's a tragedy. That's a completely solvable tragedy if you're able to bring together the right data, build add new applications that modernize the system. But they have to still be customized and tailored to each state's different requirements for how they pay doctors and for how they you know actually you know uh, provision the funds to and how they measure eligibility based on unique rules. You know, we have a federal system, that means you've got a lot of complexity. And, uh, and so it's not just about building apps, 
It's about making sure you're measuring and improving the process that is delivered with those apps continuously. And, uh, and so, you know, we think that it's a false choice to say, are you building apps or are you building workflows? You know, you're always having to do some of both. And if, and if you're honest with yourself, you're going to be not measuring success on, did we build the app fast, but you're going to be measuring success on, did we get the outcome we wanted from the business? Yeah. And, you know, people interacting with those processes, whether internally within an organization or now with portals, enabling even more interaction with unauthenticated users out there, you know, technology, um, B2C technology, right, is moving so quickly. And we all have our smartphones in our pockets and all this tech. So the end users are expecting more and more wonderful user experiences, but also we don't want to be in that situation where we're waiting months and months for claims that we're making to, to be done. And the, uh, the disability example is a great example of just how hard it is sometimes to make processes happen. And uh, Appian is a great way to help with all of that while still making sure that we're being compliant in whatever industry uh, your specific um, app is is going to be in. And back to that user experience part, another piece that Appian is great at is, I mean, our sale technology, uh, self-assembling interface layer, right? It makes it so you build it once and it looks great everywhere. You don't need to have a separate iOS engineer or someone to build it for Android or uh, worried about different form factors, whether you're using your small laptop or your really, really large screen. Um, so can you, you know, give us a little bit more insight into sale and um, and how that is really the backbone of, of helping everything else? Yeah, I mean, sale began, I think, it, when we were a very much smaller company and uh, and we saw a proliferation of mobile devices suddenly making their way into business applications. And we assumed that there was going to be a continued proliferation of different operating systems we needed to support. And so uh, it was obvious to us that companies as well were going to have this huge tech debt. If they created an app and they had to deploy it in multiple different operating systems, then every upgrade was going to be disproportionately more expensive. And, uh, and, and even today, there's data that shows it's like $50,000 worth of cost just upgrading a mobile app for iOS and Android every year. And, uh, and so if you have hundreds of applications like our clients do, in, or thousands of applications in a large business, then suddenly you're talking about many millions of dollars. And, and for what? Just to stay you know, functional. So uh, sale allows you to declare what you want, and then the platform interprets it and optimizes the rendering for the different target environment with native code for iOS and Android without you needing to be, as you point out, an iOS Swift and developer, an Android developer, and an optimized web experience as well. And whatever comes next. If we see a, you know, a, <clears throat> a new uh, expanded reality, extended reality uh, headset from Apple, then I'm sure Appian will be able to support that with sale. And, and that's the beauty of this future-proofing design environment. But the other element that is probably equally important is that it allows a single developer to be a full stack developer. It allows you to create extraordinary, beautiful experiences with the templates and with the patterns in sale. And it allows you to also make those incredibly functional. And, and so that idea of having one person being so capable and a small pod in Appian is a, you know, a lead developer, a, uh, a, a developer and a tester. That's three people who can do extraordinarily large scale data processing and create engaging, beautiful experiences even you know, public UIs with portal, as you mentioned. And so that allows us to deploy sale uh, interfaces to a containerized, isolated microservice environment and, uh, and, and therefore extend the reach of Appian as, as far as you want to go, as far as your imagination can take you. Yeah, uh, that, that is a, a great point that takes me back to what I initially said about accessibility, the being a full stack developer. I think that's part of what makes Appian a more accessible way to break into technology is because by its nature, when you're learning it, you are learning how all of the layers work together, um, which really helps you build your understanding of how the app works and lets you to continue to do more. And I mean, you're right. It also enables people, uh, you know, I, we always talk about how big of an impact Appian has on businesses, but it's also a huge impact for uh, empowering one person or a small team to be able to build and bring that impact for the customers. And I know that uh, that's 
a really great feeling and one of Appian developers' uh, favorite parts about Appian. Um, well, so yeah, just think about oh, that. You know, if, if you have a, a small team that can actually deliver and deploy on their own with the low-code DevOps that's built into the platform, you know, then you're able to be so much more self-sufficient and uh, and do so much more. And it, also, this goes to the heart of our design philosophy. You know, when we, when we uh, offer you something like RPA or robotic process automation or API integration or uh, intelligent document processing, we want to bring these technologies together into one development environment so that one person can do all of those things because all those things are necessary to solve a process problem. You need to get the right documents. You need to extract the right information from them. You need to make the right decisions. You need to combine them with information you pull from an outside API through our data fabric. And you need an interface to actually, you know, put all that information together into a single pane of glass so you can make the right decision to serve your customer or, or your members and give them an outstanding experience. And, and so why should you have to have another team for each of those different tasks and automation technologies? It doesn't make any sense. And it's disproportionately more expensive and difficult to do that the more teams you have involved. And then you need another team to manage all those teams. You know, Appian does away with all of that. And it allows you as an individual developer to to do extraordinary things, to deliver more value and to actually earn more because you're delivering more you know, value than uh, than it would otherwise require a team to deliver. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as part of you know your role, um, you have had the opportunity to speak with a ton of customers in depth about how they're using Appian, their Appian programs and everything like that. And um, you've mentioned to me before that one of the top things they say to you is, we need more Appian developers so that we can do more, not because a small team can't deliver that success, but they want to be building even more apps uh, even faster. And right. so becoming an Appian developer, it is a great career prospect these days, uh, even with um, you know the recession and everything coming, there's still a lot of Appian development roles out there because if companies need to cut back, they want to be able to solve their problems more efficiently and having Appian is one way to do that. So um, I'd like to get from your perspective, just a little bit more thoughts on the demand for Appian developers and what folks can do to kind of break into a career in Appian and what those employers are looking for uh, in an Appian developer, like what will help a person become a successful Appian developer? Yeah, well, so we're seeing continued unprecedented demand record-breaking demand every year for new Appian developers because the company keeps growing and the partner ecosystem keeps growing. So Appian is being introduced to in more places and more industries. So we're already obviously very strong and, and really the definitive choice for process automation in financial services and insurance and uh, and the US federal government. But we're also seeing increasing demand in other, in other industries in financial services, healthcare, pharma, uh, retail even. And, and so, uh, the you know the more the platform grows the more the demand is there and because when clients see the success they get when they can build a mission system for, with Appian and uh and, and they can do that in weeks rather than than you know years uh with with the low code underpinnings of, of the way the platform works then they want to do more and they want to build hundreds of apps not just one and uh and that of course takes some people <laughs> it takes some Appian developers no matter how much more productive Appian is we're creating the demand when you're creating the demand, each of you, or I should say, every Appian developer out there is creating the demand for more Appian developers when people see how much you can deliver. It it really just, it shocks people. You know, uh, I was talking to a client uh, in the um, in the federal government uh, space who came to visit our, our headquarters campus. And I hope most of you developers get a chance or all of you get a chance to come visit our, our campus in, in uh, McLean, Virginia sometime and and see how we build the software that, that you use and, and you, um, do such a great job of showcasing what you can do with it. But they were telling me that it used to cost them about $50 million to build a new application in this, in this agency. And, and uh, uh, after Appian, they said, you know, it, it's down to, you know, about $2 million. Now they credited a little bit of their own maturity as an organization adopting agile methods, but they specified the vast majority of that savings was due to the efficiency of the platform and how, uh, a small team of developers could do what it used to take, you know, basically a, a reasonable sized army. And uh, and and that's really the power of, of low code automation of, of this process automation platform. Now, yeah. what, are, what are employers looking for? It was part of the last part of your question. 
uh, Appian sits at the nexus of IT and business. And so an Appian developer needs to be more than just a coder. They need to be capable of uh, really thinking about what are they building and interacting with and being a good communicator with clients and the business and helping them understand the power of what you can do. So again, being a full stack developer means, you know, being able to talk about well, those choices to a variety of different audiences, both the IT API teams who are feeding information in the data fabric and the uh, end users who are going to be specific about what they want. And you're going to be able to have to communicate to them, use interface designer to quickly show them templates and mockups and then make those real. Uh, show them process models that you're, you know, as part of your exercise in communicating with them about how things will fit together and what you can do to transform the way they work. Yeah. Um, and of course, get certified. <laughs> of course, get certified. Uh, use all of our great learning content, uh, Academy Online, this new YouTube channel we have. And remember, uh, anyone can get their own Appian environment in minutes with Appian Community Edition and get your hands in and start playing around because um, that hands-on learning and actually starting to build is what's really going to help you. Uh, and the, your point about like, you know, showing mockups and an interface or or process models, it's another way that Appian speeds up development in the way that it helps the tech side and the business side communicate with each other because um, the business people can see uh, and and get a picture for what's happening, and it helps uh, the tech side understand what the requirements are uh, better. So. Um, we have a few minutes left. I want to make sure that we have time for any audience questions that may come in. So uh, if you're listening at home and, and you have any questions, please throw them in the chat. Um, and in the meantime, maybe we can do some uh, some rapid fire questions for you. So uh, what's one of your favorite feature releases that we've had this year in 2022? Well, Appian Portals was my absolute favorite. I've been, you know, championing this for a long time, and uh, it's great to see it come to life. Um, the uh, ability to deliver these independent containerized microservices to uh, to reach even bigger audiences, anonymous users, people who don't have Appian accounts, to publish your success. I think it's I think it's just a fantastic uh, uh, way to celebrate everything that's already been built by your teams in Appian. Yeah. Um, portals are great, and both of us had the chance to go to Appian Europe, and the live build challenge there was actually building a portal um, related to the World Cup, and that prompt and that data is available on Community. So if you want to, if you haven't used a portal before, which none of the contestants actually had, they all learned to be able to complete the challenge. Uh, you can head over to community.appian.com/challenges, and there's a prompt for you where you can get hands-on and actually learn to build your first portal, which maybe will spark some ideas for how you can help your enterprise do it. Um, next up, uh, the app market. I know that's something that uh, is very special to me and you. That was my first role coming into Appian was working very closely with the app market and you as um, the head of technology partnerships and thinking about how Appian can help play nice with, with all the others. Um, what are some of your favorite uh, things you've seen on the app market or, um, you know, favorite new listings, favorite plugin, anything like that? Yeah. So uh, I, I do run tech partnerships at Appian and we're doing some exciting new things and uh, pushing out a lot of new, great, improved integrations. So when we talk about integrations that are coming from Appian that we're publishing on the app market, um, these are trying to set the standard for what our partners are building as well. We want the integrations to be bi-directional. We want you to be able to you know, change a filter in Appian and have that update the information you're getting from a, a target system, interact inside that target system and get a change in Appian. And, and so the, there's a new generation of, of integrations appearing on the app market that really take advantage of that full power and allow you to orchestrate work that's happening in you know, your many other systems. So there's a new Esri uh, a plugin for geospatial intelligence, which works great mobile and on the web. There's great new Microsoft Teams integration that allows you, to, and this is already being used in some uh, some great clients uh, who are developer teams who are now uh, being able to extend this collaboration environment in Teams 
with Appian processes and initiating new processes and collaborating on creating new processes, all from with you know in a Teams environment. It's all about making sure that the Appian power is made simple and, and delivered to the right users and the right populations. Um, this new Guidewire partnership is going to lead to some new app market listings soon. Uh, and so it, allowing you to modernize and transform your insurance, uh, property and casualty insurance underwriting experience and, uh, and, the, and the customer experience, the digital journey there with making claims and uh, uh, just having that great core system, whatever it is, it's ERP system or like, uh, or like SAP or a specific uh, solution for an industry like Guidewire. You know, we want to make sure that you can go to the app market and immediately leverage that data to do something extraordinary. And uh, uh, there's a new connector for ServiceNow coming soon. Um, there's new connector for Splunk, uh, which is you know, the most widely used you know, logging technology. So we're really trying to unlock that potential that's there in your enterprise already. Yeah, and um, I think what you just said, I didn't, I didn't know we had one coming with ServiceNow. And of course we already integrated well with Salesforce. And I think mm -hmm. that's just another testament to Appian being so confident and and what we can do is we're actually going to play nice with our competitors that you already have and help you get even more benefit uh, from them. So, um, Mike, I I am not sure that I've been able to to see what in in the chat, but I know that I've gotten this question um, from developers that I've talked to in person. Um, what is the kind of balance or the process like from prioritizing features that maybe people have been asking for. Um, and that could be anything from portals, which is huge, to small quality of life developer things, um, to actually focusing on trying to innovate and come up with something new like sync records and um, record relationships and all of that, right? Like you need to balance the demand with um, what you think will innovate and be great next. It's kind of like the Henry Ford thing. Like you can give them faster horses or you can try and come up with the car. So um, yeah. just to to give our developers a little bit of insight into how we're thinking about uh, building the platform and, and helping them. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think it's a, a false choice to say that you, you either have to innovate by not listening to your customers and just imagining a different world that's totally uh, abstract from you know the reality you live in or you make incremental progress like faster horses. Uh, we have we use Appian to to create Appian and to manage the whole software development lifecycle for Appian, including how we capture product user cases. So we love to see what developers put in, and we rigorously use data and make better decisions with Appian on what is going to have the biggest impact for our developer community and for our users, and and that plays a part in what we do. But then we have our own ideas. So Portals is a great example. It was the number one use case. Uh, to create an anonymous user access uh, bridging technology for, for Appian. And so, of course, we were going to address it. But then it was our own ideas about how to implement that in microservices and our own uh, idea about how to use, you know, for example, Knative technology um, to allow us to do that, you know, meet the needs of the developer community, but do it in a way the developer community wasn't even asking for, to give them something extraordinary and special and elastically scalable. and future proof and and uh, and and really just you know I think that's where I think we always focus on is how can we take what you're asking for and and surprise and delight you in new ways that you weren't even anticipating were possible and uh, and and in every single release when even though we might do something extraordinary like in 22.4 with data fabric there is still in that uh, kernels of ideas. It was developers who were asking for better ways to, to uh, access data, developers who were asking for uh, better ways to manage databases, better, you know, better ways to uh, deal with the problems with CDTs. And that inspires us to take a great leap forward with Data Fabric. But also, don't forget, in every single release, we make sure that we are doing things that are just there to refine the platform, the developer experience. We listen to all of those uh, nagging complaints and issues over any rough edges in the sale language. And uh, and so please keep those you know the, uh, those complaints feedback coming because uh, we want it to be a joy in every part of the platform. We don't want any of that code to get old. We're willing to burn it down if we if we need to to make sure that that you have a great experience. Great answer. Thank you, Mike. Um, so let's uh, just close this out. One one final question. Uh, what are you looking forward to for next year? <laughs> 
Oh my, it's well, I mean, looking forward to see what developers can do with the data fabric. You know, I think yeah. that is, uh, you know, going to be exceptional. When you start looking at how they're going to uh, be able to combine information from different APIs and databases and do, do that data fusion in real time, I, I can't wait to see what, what uh, applications and potential uh, new processes that unlocks. Uh, I also, uh, you know, don't want to tip my hand too much about what's coming in the roadmap, but uh, you can imagine when you've got all the data together, you're going to want to start to do some more extraordinary things. With it. And so we've, we're going to have some great new new tools for you to work with. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm definitely most excited about seeing what the developers will do with this incredible potential we've given them. Yeah, likewise. And uh, it's, a, it's a challenge for me to come up with more ways to challenge them, not just uh, within... Um, not just seeing what they're building within their enterprises, but also engaging with developers more, doing more challenges that help them get familiar with new features that they may not immediately have a use case for um, on their projects, but can keep them up to date and making sure that they have it in their back pocket. So when the chance comes up, they can use it. Um, all right, well, I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mike. A lot of really insightful things. Uh, we had some great viewership comments uh, out in the chat. And if anyone has any questions, comments, and concerns, uh, my inbox is always open, april.shupel at appian.com. So thanks, everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your year. Thank you, April.